Hi everyone, welcome to SoBell DIY. My name is Leanne and today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate a very similar style farmhouse type stand. These can run anywhere from about $15 all the way up to $40 and I've made a few variants of these in the past. I've made these two using a galvanized finish, one smaller and one larger and I've also made one in a chipped enamel finish that I've used in past videos that you guys have asked me about and today we are going to be doing a faux wood finish. So let's get into a list of the materials you will need for this project. From Dollar Tree, I picked up a pack of these stove burner covers and we will be using the smaller of the two covers, a strand of this beaded necklace, this small metal bucket, and if you have a larger sized bucket, you can use the larger of the burner covers to make a larger size stand. This style paintbrush that you can get at Dollar Tree, and I'll explain why I like to use this style brush later. This is an off-white paint sample from Home Depot. This is the Folk Art Home Decor Wax, and this is very specific to this technique as well. Super glue and hot glue gun and glue sticks. And I'm just using a Ziploc baggie to rest my brushes on. For the faux wood grain look, I like to use the brush and paint technique because the paint and the brush create very similar lines to what you would see in like a wood grain look. So just make sure you stay going in the same direction and cover and you don't have to even do two coats if you're going with something like this, um, with the paint like this, it covered very well the first time. But right now I am only focusing on the top and using my hand dryer to dry it. Next, with this specific little bucket, I'm just removing the little handle there, and if this is the same one you're using, just mess with it for a few minutes and it will eventually pull away. And then what we're gonna do is you're gonna wanna find the center. So I just eyeballed it and tried to find the center as best I could. And then once I felt like it was in a pretty, pretty good place, I just took a marker and outlined it so I would know where to glue the bucket back on. After filming this part, I did go back and have to re-glue it back on because I originally just went around the edge, but I ended up going back on and at the very top of the bucket, I put an extremely large, um, large amount of hot glue on the very bottom center there and a little bit of the super glue as well. And then I pressed the little bucket back on. So here you'll see me just going around the edges, but I did end up going back and putting a large glob of the hot glue right in the center. And that really gave it a much better hold. Next to add the beads, if you would like to add this look, you'll just cut the strand of beads and then I am just going around and I'm adding a little bit of hot glue and pressing a small section on. And then every so often I would just go back in and add a little bit of the super glue and then add hot glue again. So I just went around and did this alternating. Mostly I used the hot glue, but I just added here and there a little bit of the super glue for just a little extra hold. But just take your time with this part. It is a little tedious, but um, again, like I said, if you wanted to use hot glue too, you can, but just go with it, have fun, and don't burn your fingers. Mm -hmm. And this is what it should look like after you've completed this step and you don't have to use too much hot glue or it does get really thick and cakey looking. Now just taking the same paint and the same brush, just go around the entire um, edge where the beads are. And what I did was started by going um, side to side all the way around. And then I went back around and did kind of like an up and down motion to kind of get in between the areas that the side to side motion would not reach. And that helps to really create a really good coverage. Thank you. 
Then I did the same thing on the bottom bucket area and I just went in an up and down motion all the way around. If you have one of these little handheld uh, dryer things, they are really, really awesome to have and they really speed up the process a lot. So moving on to the underneath side, I just did the same thing, painted everything, um, the rim, the sides, and I just went around kind of in a circular um, pattern. And just remember that the pattern that you're creating with the brush is the pattern that's gonna show up as you, um, or after you apply the wax. Now applying the wax, I just made sure my brush was clean and that the paint was dry because it can get really muddy looking if the white isn't completely dry. And going in the same exact motion and direction as the lines you've already created, just go back and forth until you get the coverage that you want. I did not paint the inside of the bucket just because no one was going to see that, but of course, if you would like to, go ahead. And that is all for today's tutorial, and I love the faux wood look on this. I think it turned out really nice. And if you like the galvanized or chipped enamel looks, I do have tutorials demonstrating those painting techniques on other items. So be sure to go through and check that out if you'd rather recreate one of the others. But I hope that you have enjoyed this. And if you have, please remember to follow me and share for more fun, affordable farmhouse DIYs like this. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.